All right, we're talking about boosting today. If you use your time to yourself effectively, you can get a boost. I'm gonna to explain to you how that happens. But before I do, let's see how many of you, and I'm curious actually to see with a show of hands, how many of you would say that when you have your own time for yourself, it's not as good as it could be? How many of you would say that you come back to work sometimes the next day after having a break the day before and you're still kind of tired? How many of you would say that that happens? So, a lot. Yeah. How many of you would say that you end up, you finish your weekend and you come back to work on Monday morning and you just don't feel as refreshed as you would like to be? How many people say that? A lot. Okay, here's, I bet you everyone's going to put their hand up on this one. How many of you would say you come back from vacations needing a vacation from your vacation? <laughs> yeah. Why does that happen? That happens because we're not using our downtime well. We think of downtime as just R&R, &R, rest and relaxation. And don't get me wrong, R&R &R is an important part of getting a boost. But it's only one part and it's only one very small part. What I think you need to do in order to get more out of your leisure time is turn your downtime into what I call uptime. Downtime is essentially a time to do nothing. It's when you're not working or not busy. And so what does that tell us about how to regenerate ourselves effectively? Nothing. Downtime is just about being inactive. If we want to know how to be better, if we want to know how to enjoy our leisure time more and come back to work more effective than we were before we left, we need to shift our thinking from downtime to uptime. And what is uptime? It's leisure time that effectively satisfies the factors that lead to replenishment and produces recovery, or what I call boosting. Now, if you use your downtime well, you get a boost. And so what I'm going to talk to you today about today is exactly how to get a boost. And I think the easiest way to think about the RENEW, which is an acronym that stands for the recovery of resources, needs, escape, and well-being, I think the easiest way to understand the model is to think about these buckets, the RENEW buckets. And what you want to do is you want to maintain an adequate level of having those buckets filled. If you do that, you're going to feel good and you're going to be more productive when you come back to work. The reason R&R &R is inadequate as a form of recovery during your lunchtime, on your vacations, whenever, is because R&R &R only satisfies one half of one bucket. If you want to be recovered when, come back, when you come back to work on Monday morning, you need to fill out all those buckets. You don't just want to fill one half of one bucket. R&R &R is only one-eighth of what you need to come back to work better and to feel good during your leisure time. So people who have lots of non-work-related hassles on the weekend come back to work on Monday morning, burned out. People who don't have a lot of non-work-related hassles on the weekend come back to work on Monday morning, not so burned out. Also, people who have fewer non-work-related hassles on the weekend come back to work on Monday morning and their job performance is higher. So you can have your cake and eat it too. You can enjoy your uptime and have that effectively used uptime result in higher levels of job performance. You can be happy and you can be effective. And the research bears that out. I think it's important for you to think about the specific resources that you use when you're at work. It's not just about I'm working and then I'm not working. What specific resources are you using when you're working? Do you have to use a lot of analytical skills? Then in your leisure time, don't use analytical skills. Do you have to use a lot of creative skills? Then in your uptime, don't use a lot of creative skills. You want to do the opposite of what the demands placed upon you during your obligation time require. And when I say obligation time, that could be paid employment, it could be taking care of elderly parents, taking care of young children, trying to get through graduate school, it doesn't matter. Whatever your obligations are, if you use your uptime effectively, you come back to those obligations more effectively. Okay. Then let's move on and talk about the second bucket that we need to fill, and that's needs. Again, human beings have a number of different needs they need to satisfy. We have physical needs or physiological needs like food and water and sleep, as you know. We also have psychological needs. And the three psychological needs that we tend to focus on in psychology are the need for competence, the need for autonomy, and the need for relatedness. How many of you would say that you could use more sleep than you get? That's a lot of people, yeah. And somebody, I'm just curious to hear, somebody just shout out, what would you say are some of the reasons 
you don't sleep as well as you could. Get rid of the cat. Cats are evil. What other, what's the reason? Cell phone by the bed. Very bad idea, absolutely. Cell phone by the bed, a terrible thing. Yeah. Yours, yours won't shut off? Oh, your mind. I thought you said your phone. Is that like a phone your work gave you? It doesn't turn off. And the next step, we surgically attach it to your body. And what about the need for competence? What pattern do you think that takes? Same? No? Different? You're right. The need for competence flatlines. We tend not to satisfy our need for competence on the weekend. So right away, if this is part of renewal, if satisfying our needs is important for feeling good and for coming back to work and being better than you were before you left, right away we have some low-hanging fruit. Right away we have some sense that if you want to flourish, one of the things that you should be doing, because the research suggests that you're not satisfying your need for competence as well as you could be, work on that. I bet you everybody in this room has something they used to do that made them feel happy. A hobby, maybe you played the guitar, maybe you drew pencil drawing. Everyone has something they used to do that they don't do anymore. You got too busy, you had kids, you forgot about it. Can I see please by a show of hands, how many of you would say that there's something in your life that you used to enjoy that you don't do anymore? Yeah. Do that. Make a point this weekend of doing that. And as you get better at drawing, as you relearn that chord that you forgot, you're going to be satisfying your need for competence. And guess what? You're going to be happier. And you're going to come back to work and be more productive. Easy. Low-hanging fruit. The science of well-being. Escape is made up of two elements. The first is R&R. But as we've seen, relaxation only fills one half of one of these buckets. Relaxation, a state of low activation and positive affect or positive emotion is great. And I'm not suggesting you shouldn't enjoy relaxation in your downtime. You should. It's good for you. Research shows that it's good for you. But if that's all you're doing, you're selling yourself short. Because there's a lot more that you could be doing that would make you feel better and make you more effective. The second element of, this, of escape that people tend not to know about is psychological detachment. A psychological detachment is mentally disengaging from work. If you're spending your evenings thinking about the next day, you're not boosting. If you're spending your vacations with your laptop in front of you, checking your email twice a day, you're not boosting. In order to boost, in order to come back to work better, happier, and more effective, you have to psychologically detach from work. You have to, it's not enough to just physically leave the office, you have to mentally leave the office. So how do we mentally leave the office? That's a big challenge for us. Now I do have to note, some of my own research shows, that if you're just thinking about well-being all the time, that's bad for you. Okay? If you're constantly thinking, diagnosing, am I happy now, should I be happier, what should I do to be happier, that's bad for you. That actually reduces your well-being. You're ruminating, not good. But if you're constantly engaging in activities, that make you happier, that is good for you. That's the intentional activity that promotes well-being. So, to summarize, when people think of their leisure time, they tend to think of R&R. They tend to think of rest and relaxation. I'm here today to tell you that downtime, focusing on R&R, is an incomplete way to think about how to live well. A better way to think about how to use your leisure time to promote your own well-being and your performance when, it, when you come back to the obligations that you face is to think about uptime. Why? Because downtime focuses on R&R &R and uptime focuses on renewal. Downtime focuses on getting a break. Uptime focuses on getting a boost. Remember those buckets. Think about R cubed. Rest, relaxation, and renewal. And remember, renew is the missing R in R&R. &R. Thanks for your time.